day trading. The activity of buying and selling the same financial asset on the same day sounds like one of the smartest approaches to investing in stocks. Why bother holding on to an index fund when you can make daily profits? And to make day trading sound even better, there are lots of people on the internet nice enough to teach you how to trade and make huge, easy profits just like they do, for a fee, of course. I'm Ben Felix, Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of Common Sense Investing, I'm going to tell you what day trading can and can't do for you. The first and most important thing to understand about day trading is what the data say about its effectiveness as a strategy. There are a few data sets that researchers have been able to get their hands on to answer this question. These data sets are unbiased samples of all transactions for thousands of brokerage accounts. The researchers define day traders in the data based on the frequency of their transactions, and then they analyze their performance. A 2000 paper in the Journal of Finance titled Trading is Hazardous to Your Wealth, the Common Stock Investment Performance of Individual Investors, examined a data set of 66,465 households with accounts at a large US discount broker between 1991 and 1996. They set out to test two competing theories of individual trading activity. One theory is that investors will trade when the marginal benefit of doing so exceeds the marginal cost. The other theory is that investors are overconfident and will trade to their own detriment. Based on their findings, the authors conclude that individual investors are overconfident based on the empirical evidence that the average household earns a return close to the market before costs, but trails the market by about 1.1% annually after costs. In other words, they trade to their own detriment. They also found that the average household over this period tilted its portfolio toward riskier small cap value stocks. Accounting for these additional risk exposures using the Fama French three-factor model, the average household trailed a risk-appropriate benchmark by 3.7% annually. The average household turned over about 75% of its portfolio holdings annually, and the associated transaction costs explained their poor performance. The 20% of households in the sample that traded the most often turning their holdings over more than twice annually, earn net returns that trail the market by 5.5% annually, and trail a risk-appropriate benchmark by 10.3% annually. These findings have theoretical significance. In an efficient market, an informational edge should be rare, and active management strategies, like day trading or investing in actively managed mutual funds, should underperform passive strategies, like index funds. The authors suggest that their findings support the theory from behavioral finance that overconfident investors overestimate the value of the information that they have, causing them to underperform by trading too frequently. In a 2009 paper in the Review of Financial Studies titled Just How Much Do Individual Investors Lose by Trading, the authors got their hands on a complete trading history of all investors in Taiwan, the world's 12th largest stock market, from 1995 through 2019. They found that individuals who engage in day trading reduced the aggregate portfolio return for all individual investors by 3.8% per year. These losses were attributed to trading losses, commissions, transaction taxes, and market timing losses. Stated in different terms, over this period, Taiwanese individual investors in aggregate lost about 2.2% of Taiwan's GDP to trading per year. These researchers had the full data set for all market participants in Taiwan. So they were also able to observe that while individuals incur trading and market timing losses, institutions gained from the same. This speaks to the question that individual investors should always ask themselves before placing a trade. Who is on the other side? Do I know more than whoever I'm selling to or buying from? These data intuitively suggest that individuals are less informed than institutions when they place trades. The authors dug deeper into this issue finding that nearly all of the losses incurred by individuals stemmed from aggressive trades, which they defined as buy limit orders with high prices and sell limit orders with low prices. In other words, when individual investors were willing to buy higher above the market price or sell lower below the market price in order to execute a trade, they were willing to trade with urgency, is when they tended to lose. Institutions, on the other hand, made most of their short-term trading profits from passive trades, where they were not demanding urgency and were instead providing liquidity to the individual investors. As the authors of this study explain, the institutional profits associated with passive trades are realized quickly as institutions provide liquidity to aggressive, but apparently uninformed, individual investors. 
While these data should be discouraging, a 2012 study titled The Cross-Section of Speculator Skill, Evidence from Day Trading, examined the distribution of outcomes for day traders. Sure, on average, day traders trail the market after costs, which just makes sense. But do the best day traders consistently make money? Again using Taiwanese data, this time between 1992 and 2006, the authors find that less than 1% of the total population of day traders is able to reliably earn positive excess returns after costs. In the average year in their sample, about 450,000 Taiwanese individuals engage in day trading, while only between 1,000 and 4,000 of them, depending on the assumed level of trading costs, that is between 0.22% and 0.9%, of the 450,000 earn consistent alpha after costs. It is important to point out that the top 500 day traders, the top 0.1%, do persistently earn very large alphas of about 38 basis points after costs per day. The authors show that this result is partially but not completely explained by chance, meaning that there is evidence of a very small number of skilled traders within their sample. We have now seen that while day trading is harmful in aggregate, mostly due to costs, there is meaningful variation in the cross-section of investors' ability to be successful in day trading. A small, tiny, really, subset of day traders in Taiwan from 1992 through 2006 did exhibit an ability to earn consistent profits. Maybe there is hope for day traders. At least there was hope in Taiwan from 1992 to 2006. The world has changed a lot since then. A more recent study titled Day Trading for a Living examined all individuals who began to day trade between 2013 and 2015 through the end of 2017 in the Brazilian equity futures market, the third largest in terms of trading volume in the world. They found that of the 19,646 new day traders in the sample, 5.7% of them day traded only one day, 50.8% between 2 and 50 days, 15.8% between 51 and 100 days, 13.9% between 101 and 200 days, 5.9% between 201 and 300 days, and 7.9% traded for more than 300 days. They found a monotonic decrease in the probability of profit with an increasing number of active trading days. In other words, traders who traded more often were less likely to be profitable. Of the 1,551 individuals who day traded for at least 300 days, they found that 97% of them lost money. 1.1% of them earn more than minimum wage, 0.5% of them earn more than a bank teller's salary, and the single best day trader earned 310 US dollars per day on average with a lot of daily variance. They also ask whether there is learning among day traders. If there is learning, the bad day traders should self-select out, while only the good ones continue to trade and increasingly improve. They find no evidence of learning, instead observing patterns usually found in gambling activities where the proportion of successful players also monotonically decreases with the number of rounds played. The authors of this paper suggest that a possible reason for their finding diverging from the previous evidence of a few day traders in Taiwan earning large excess returns is that during the 1992 to 2006 sample, retail day traders did not have to compete for profits with institutional high-frequency trading algorithms, which are increasingly prevalent in today's market. This suggestion brings up an important concept in trading. The Paradox of Skill. This term was coined by Michael Mabusen and is explained in detail in a Credit Suisse research note. Mabusen uses the example of Ted Williams, who was the last player in Major League Baseball to hit over 400 for a full season in 1941. Baseball players have gotten better over time, not to mention the use of performance-enhancing drugs. So why hasn't anyone been able to match Williams? The answer lies in the two dimensions of skill. Skill can be viewed as absolute and relative. In absolute terms, today's athletes are more skilled than athletes of the past. They are better trained, better coached, have superior nutrition, and come from a larger talent pool. If one of today's best baseball players went back in time to 1941, they would likely have an easy time matching or surpassing Ted Williams. But today's athletes don't get to travel back in time. Their higher absolute level of skill is not an advantage because their relative level of skill is, as evidenced by nobody matching Ted Williams, lower. In a competitive scenario, like baseball or stock trading, everyone is competing to find an edge. As absolute skill increases for all participants, relative skill is decreasing. 
Finding that edge is getting harder because everyone is getting better. If two equally skilled traders are competing for an edge, the outcome will be determined by luck. And as the skill of all traders increases, the role of luck in trading outcomes also increases. All right, I know I've painted a bleak picture for the prospect of day traders, and rightly so, because the reality is just as bleak. So why do day traders still day trade? A 2019 paper in the Review of Asset Pricing Studies titled Learning Fast or Slow suggests three possible explanations. First, day traders may not have standard risk-averse preferences. In other words, they seek investments with a highly skewed outcome, like lotteries. If this is the preference that day traders are exhibiting, the authors suggest that simply buying and holding a single volatile stock would be a better solution than day trading. Second, day traders may be overconfident in their prior beliefs about their own abilities, and be biased in the way that they learn. While novice day traders likely realize that most day traders do lose money, the stories of successful day traders may circulate in non-representative proportions, giving the impression that success is more frequent than it actually is. And third, day traders may day trade for non-financial reasons like entertainment, a taste for gambling, or the desire to impress others. They may enjoy the process of day trading so much that regular and expected losses are simply the cost of admission to an enjoyable activity. There's one final point that any day trader, or stock picker for that matter, should consider. Which stocks are you looking at and why? It's not as obvious as it seems. A 2007 paper in the Review of Financial Studies titled All That Glitters, The Effective Attention and News on the Buying Behavior of Individual and Institutional Investors attempted to answer the question. The authors found that individual investors are net buyers of stocks with high trading volume, net buyers of stocks with extremely negative and extremely positive one-day returns, and net buyers of stocks that appear in the news. Limiting their opportunity set to attention-grabbing stocks poses a problem for individual investors. The attention-attracting qualities of a stock may detract from their attractiveness as an investment. The authors offer the example of a well-circulated article about a deserted vacation spot attracting the attention and the travel plans of many vacationers who would all be disappointed by the crowds of like-minded tourists when they got there. Similarly, attention-based stock purchases could temporarily inflate a stock's price, leading to disappointing subsequent returns. And even beyond that, there is a massive skew in individual stock returns. Only 1.3% of global stocks were responsible for all of the net wealth creation in excess of treasury bills from 1990 through 2018. There are thousands of stocks that trade across the world, but the evidence suggests that individual investors focus on the ones that grab their attention as opposed to examining the full opportunity set. It is clear that day trading is not a profitable activity for most people, and more trading leads to a higher likelihood of poor performance. The fact that a tiny fraction of day traders exhibit skill in some samples should not be enough to entice rational investors to gamble, but the behavior of day traders suggests that gambling may be exactly what they want. If day trading stocks is the biggest casino in the world, like other casinos, it is a losing game. Since there is no evidence of learning among day traders, paying someone to teach you how to day trade is only making your prospects worse after costs. Finally, individual investors tend to focus on attention-grabbing stocks instead of rationally assessing the full global opportunity set. This alone dramatically increases the likelihood of trailing the market. Thanks for watching. My name is Ben Felix and this is Common Sense Investing. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone who you think could benefit from the information. And don't forget, if you've run out of Common Sense Investing videos to watch, you can tune into weekly episodes of the Rational Minder podcast wherever you get your podcasts.